Hey everybody! Today, Rado previews a prototype of Beyond Humanity Colonies. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goose, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to the colony, everybody. Or, well, what will grow to become a mighty colony? So far, all that's here is the Ark, also known as the Advanced Residential Component. And this is where all our residents will be living at the beginning of the game. Although we will build more and more and more unique modules over the course of the game to expand the capabilities and the housing potential of the uh, Ark over here. So, you may be wondering yourself, why is this lit up like a Christmas tree? Because it is. This, is. this thing is actually lit. You can see it's got little LEDs in here. It's battery powered. And uh, why is that? Because this is a Bluetooth enabled device that connects and synchronizes with a smartphone or tablet app. And this app is what runs the entire simulation. And I gotta say, that makes, uh, uh, was it, Beyond Humanity's Colonies probably the most ambitious ambitious board game ever created. There is so much going on here. I'm just going to try and show you just the basics so you get an idea of what it's all about. But you can learn a lot more by, by hitting that eye up in the top right corner screen to go to the Kickstarter page. So anyway, uh, this doesn't look very good. So let me just go on ahead. I am streaming it. Let me just bring that. And there, we, there's the app up there in the top right corner of the screen. Let's get going. So, uh, in fact, actually, let's just zoom in a little bit more. So, as you can see, you can save your game, load. Uh, there are solo uh, campaigns available, although my prototype doesn't have any of that business. You can play it cooperatively or competitively, i.e. semi-cooperatively. And that's really where the heart of this game is. Because while all players are invested in ensuring that the colony thrives, we are still competing to see who will become the uh, leader of the colony once the game is over. And that's what I'm going to show you about today. The game also has scenarios that uh, seem pretty cool from what I understand. There's this whole corporation metagame that's available. Again, you can learn more about that on the Kickstarter page. Let's just go on ahead and start up a new campaign. Where, first we have to pick a planet. And apparently, I forget the exact number, something like 700,000 planets are going to be available, and they're all based on real ones that have been spotted by astronomers, and the developers are trying to make them actually um, have the same sorts of stats and, and whatnot. So, do we want a hard desert, hard dunes, or hard metal rich? Well, maybe we don't want to play hard. Let's just refresh again. Out of the 700,000, maybe we can get an easy or a medium. Oh, still, it just wants to throw hard ones at us. You can keep on... Um, um, doing this until you get... Ooh, very hard. Uh, do I want... Yeah, well, okay, I was going to go for an easy one. Let's go for a very hard desert. Let's let's really punish ourselves. Because it should be hard, right? So, uh, this... Alrighty, it's desert dunes. There's not much atmosphere. Uh, liquid. Alright, so atmosphere and liquid are going to be tougher. Some planets, uh, there might be a bit more abundant and we wouldn't have to focus on that so much. Heavy clouds, frost, stable. Okay, we don't have to worry about earthquakes. Uh, there is extreme weather and magnetic information. And by the way, uh, like the game is a prototype, this is obviously a pre-release alpha. I'm sure all the text will actually fit in the final one. So if I didn't like this, I could go on ahead and choose a different one. But you can see, um, if if we go with this, we will definitely want to build a hydroponics dome because the output will... Oh no, we don't want to. Hydroponics are going to be greatly reduced on this planet because it's such a very harsh um, uh, desert planet. Uh, landing pads. Are, are not as good. Wow, okay. So this is going to be tough. Landing pads are not as cool as normal. Life support is... But, okay, a uh, life support system can be improved. Solar panels are reduced. Must be because of the extreme weather. So, this is a bunch of information that will inform how we make our... Uh, Colony grow. And again, if we don't like this, I could go back and say, well, let's just maybe have a very... Uh, just a hard desert. Or again, if I want an easy one, let's try one more time. And we've got normal. Okay. Let's just go with normal volcanic. Although, to be fair, the rules do suggest that easy and normal are still kind of introductory. And if you want the full game... All right, let's go... Let's just go for a hard, metal-rich planet. All right. So you can see, there's just tons of variety. This one, uh, again, no atmosphere. Liquids are going to be tough, so we're going to have to focus more on liquids. It's super hot. It is stable. And, all right. Oh, people are not happy to be here. 
And uh, security is going to be tougher. Tech, all right, so all three, uh, happiness, security, and technology are going to be hampered. Uh, industrial dome, oh, we do want to build an industrial dome because it'll be better because of whatever is available on this planet to use. Uh, at the uh, gas output of the atmospheric synthesizer is not as powerful as normal. The well is also, oh, water is going to be tough here. So that's, that's good to know. All right, next up, we've got the fleet that got us here that's still up there in orbit. Off-world shuttles, luxury orbital hotels, Hotel or a mining company. Now, these are, once again, going to change the parameters that we are going to be trying to survive here. Uh, so, uh, and interestingly, the luxury orbital hotel is rare. What does rare mean? I don't know. It has to do with the metagame, which I haven't seen much about. Again, check out the Kickstarter page to learn more. So, uh, migration and happiness. So, people will migrate if we have a luxury orbital hotel. Although, that means it's going to be tougher to deal with security. Um, right. So, that would change things further. If we go for the shuttles, colonists can work off-world on different... Oh, ooh, so we can tax them more. So we get more income for the more colonists we have. All right. And let's see. What's the other one? The mining field. All managers start with an, uh, with an expedition. Ooh. All right. So we can already have an expedition right from the get-go. That's pretty cool. I do like that. But that's just a one-time boost we'll have at the beginning. Uh, and that won't help us anymore. Those other ones will give us a boost for the whole game. More taxes with... Pu and what was the uh, luxury hotel? Particularly because it's rare. Right. Uh, so more people... It'll be easier to get people to come. Now... The question of which one of these we choose is in part decided by our starting decrees and our starting secret objectives. Uh, because we are playing competitively. Now, Jen has already chosen. You get, every player gets five and they choose three objectives. I haven't chosen mine yet. Let's take a look. All right, so I could be going for a small fortune or um, my special private goal. We'll talk about that in a second. I could try to make this a good place or uh, all right, um, a prison colony or... A mega city startup. And those are the points I will get if, at the end of the game, I have achieved three of these goals. Because I'm not going to keep all five. Now, which one do I want? So, you might say, well, of course I'll take the private goal of scientists being the second largest population. Because it's worth 30 points, right? Well, here's the problem with that. I am, in this game, going to be um, Boris. Over here, Boris Arnimov, an inventor. I'm in good with a scientist. It is because I'm Boris that I have access to this. And everybody knows this is my secret goal. Which means, if people want to prevent me from getting 30 points, they just have to make sure scientists are not the dominant specialty of this colony. And if players work co uh, combined to stop that, that's 30 points I don't get. So I don't have to take this. I could say to heck with it, jettison it. Everybody thinks I'm trying to go for scientists and they waste their time trying to stop me. And I'm, in fact, trying to pursue other stuff. So this is my first real choice. Which of these ones am I going to take? I think I will jettison that so that Jen will not realize I don't care about scientists and she'll just assume I do. So do I want to be rich? Do I want to run a prison? Um, let's see. Now, none of these necessarily tie into whether we're going to go for a luxury orbital hotel or whatnot. Um, but you know what? If I go for the mega city, that means we got to make a lot of residential. So, okay, uh, that means I would want a colony that will get populated heavily so I can push an agenda of getting two residential uh, capsules and the uh, temporary one installed. So, I'm gonna, this is one of my secret goals. And... Do I want... Oh, and 5,000? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll try to go for a big colony, although you could go much bigger than 5,000. And let's see. I'm just going to try to be rich. So I won't try to make a penal colony in space this particular game. Although if this was my goal, it would give me... It would help me make a lot of decisions. All right. So anyway, those are my secret goals. Also, my starting decrees are, well, because I am Boris, I've got the uh, Discovery Program. And I've got... Water distribution, which means we can... Well, people will be less happy, but we'll increase our tech, and we will have extra water. That's good, because remember, water's going to be tough on this planet. We were warned about that. And my other one is a radio station, which means I can everybody exchanges a decree card if we want, and we increase the, popu the happiness of the population. Okay, so those are my goals. I guess I know I want to get a big population, and uh, migration is improved. 
Migration is improved with this. Now, of course, this would be something that all players would have to decide together uh, because we are working. And let's say we convince... Or players could just choose random if they want. Let's go with the rare Orbital Hotel. And now, on to the next step where um, we are actually making a Bluetooth connection between this and the uh, smartphone. So that'll take a second. All right. And, okay, we're ready to go. Now, we have to log in. Remember, I am Boris, which means I've got this little Boris chip here, which has an RF chip on the back. I'm going to log in. Boop, boop. Boris is uh, reporting for duty. Jen is Gazelle Carter, the Explorer. Okay, she is on board. If we were playing with three or four or five players, other players would log in as themselves, so the app knows who's playing and all that. But we have our managers. We are ready to start. Okay. Let's go ahead and zoom in on it again as we gather our colony data and perhaps reticulate some splines along the way. And then we will see what our situation is and start actually running this place, doing basically worker placement. Okay, so we are in the first of 20 months. Everybody's content. We have some crime. Our, our tech is not as good as it could be. And let's see, we are almost full. We can house 3,000 people. We're at 2,933. We got a little bit of a boost because of that luxury hotel. Alrighty, everybody's calling us. There are no scientists, Marines, prisoners, or security forces. Jen thinks I want to get scientists, but I don't care. Also, we generate a maximum of 15 power, 15 life support, 10 liquid, 10 gas, and currently we're consuming 5 of each of those, and we have 30 stock. If we want, we can go back and look at, uh, you know, remind ourselves what the fleet is all about, and the planet, uh, and as I understand it, more and more options will be available here as we can look up more things. But anyway, that is the situation. The game has begun. And how does it work? Well, on your turn, you are going to do some worker placement. At the beginning of the game, all we've got is the Ark, which is over here. And these are one, two, three, four, five worker placement spots we can actually go to to do things. I could get myself some space credits, get myself um, some Terran goods. I could start an expedition, or um, if I'd already done an expedition, I could start researching what I found on the expedition, because there's artifacts on this planet. Or I could uh, campaign for my popularity so that more people on the Ark love me, because there are a lot of points to be had. At the end of the game, they are going to vote in a new president. I believe 20 points for whoever is the most popular. So I could just do an action of love me more, everybody, so I could be going for that long term, or I could get myself some more political capital, which I need for certain things. And then finally, now these are one, if I take this spot, it's blocked for anybody else. Anybody can come down here, though, which means I could get a couple more decree cards, I could start working on building a module, or I could hire an assistant. So, those are the actions that are available to me right now. And these are the two assistants that are available in the game. They are here because the pilot is here because of Jen the Explorer, and the strong AI is here because of me, a scientist. I don't particularly want to hire them. These are actions you would be more likely to do if you got frozen out of an action, and you're like, oh, well... Shoot, I can't do what I want to do. I'll go on ahead and pay to hire an assistant because that means on the next turn I could do three actions and I get to go first. So they're a way to kind of manipulate turn order and get bonus stronger actions than normal. I'm not going to bother with them uh, because I don't want to spend any of my Terran goods to keep them happy. I've only got two Terran goods, or one Terran good and two credits here at the beginning of the game. So what do I want to do? What do I want to do? Well, I do, remember... I've got that secret goal of making this a mega city, which means sooner than later I want a temporary residential ca or, and two residential dome modules. And not uh, you know not for nothing, we're almost out of space. So I think it might be good to start building a dome module, which is see I think yeah residential domes. So there's two of them, uh, no three ultimately that could be built. All right. So do I want to start building? All right, and by the way, starting to build is uh, coming over here, so I can't get frozen out of that. Now, to build um, requires stock. And as you can see, the, com the, uh, the colony has 30 stock. But it requires something for me as well. I've got these three decree cards. I already talked about them. The water distribution, in case we run low on water. The radio station to make people happy. And uh, my own discovery protocol the program that helps with uh, artifacts that we find. So, uh, if I want to start building something, 
I have to give up one of these cards. These are multi-use cards. And it will be the first step of the political capital, the leadership I need to show to convince everybody that we should build this. Now, ultimately, three... Let's uh, see, what is it? One, as you can see, the little plus one right there. One plus... Since we're playing a two- or a three-player game, two plus one cards, three cards, three uh, decree cards have to be burned to uh, get the uh, goodwill among the populace to actually build this thing. I want to get these things built. And of course, we both want them built because it's good for the colony. And um, I, I would have to burn all three of my cards to do it, which means I'm giving up other abilities. So before I do that, before I start building, my first action is going to be to come over here to basically get a couple more decrees. One, two. I got two more decree cards. And they are, oh, they're nice ones uh, because they're green. And by the way, this game at this point is very colorblind unfriendly because it's red and green all over the place. The developers know this. They're going to address it. Anyway, additional food rations or rations. I can get one stock for every thousand and makes people happy. All right, so it just generates more stock. Oh, but I can't do it unless we've built the hydroponic farm, which, if I recall correctly, wasn't going to be as powerful. Or maybe I'm thinking of a different planet. All righty. And then I've also just drawn a smear campaign against colonists. If I want to slow down immigration, I could start getting the people against it. It will make the people unhappy, but it will slow down um, migration. And lies repeated often enough become truth. Now to do this, I'm going to need one political capital and three credits. To do this one, I need two credits. But these are both ways that I could try to change the fundamental makeup of our colony. But if I don't want to, I could say to heck with it, I'm just going to use these to to start building stuff. All right, so anyway, my first action was I gave myself two extra decrees. So I've got a handful of uh, one bad one. Red ones are the ones that the colonists aren't going to be happy about. They don't want water rationing, but we need it to ensure we have extra water on hand. And it will increase our tech, even if it does make people unhappy. If people become too unhappy, well, this will start flashing red, which means they're about to riot, and we have to deal with that. All righty, anyway, so... I've, anyway, I've done my first action. I got a couple things. It is Jen's first turn. So she takes her worker. She could get a couple as well, but she can go out and do other things. And I think she will be the first to rush out and explore the planet. Uh, this is either explore or research. So Jen is going to explore, which means if there, if there was a third or fourth or fifth player, well, Jen blocked it. Nobody else can do that right now. So what happens when you explore? Well, you grab the first artifact off the deck. And these are, um, you know, like mineral deposits, maybe signs of alien life, ancient alien life, or, uh, you know, old debris and wreckage from old uh, you know, uh, satellites and whatnot that have come before us. But anyway, so Jen has the potential to find this artifact. To start searching for it, she has to spend one Terran good or three credits. She start, We each started, she'll spend the Terran good. So she is on her way. Now, she doesn't know what it is she's about to find. She now has to spend three credits to be able to do the second part of this, and then she'll at least know what it is, and she can start researching it to get benefits for it. These give points, and they're a way to basically convert resources and time into other sorts of resources and special abilities. We'll find out what it is later. I have no idea. So that was Jen's turn. Okay, so we have done the first round of worker placement. I went to the universal place, Jen went elsewhere. After the round is over, all the spaces become available, and now, snake draft style, we go in reverse turn order. Jen now gets to do a second action, if she wants, and then I'll get to go. So it's like player one, two, three, and then three, two, one. All right, so, uh, and that's how it goes. And between each of those phases, the board re-empties uh, out so we can go again. So now... So Jen, she would like to have more credits so she could finish this. She doesn't, so she's just going to come over here and get some credits. So next round, and next month, she'll be able to spend these credits to finish the exploration and find her first artifact. And because she's doing this, that makes me assume one of her secret goals is the explorer one of ending the game with more discovered artifacts than anybody else. Now, of course, I don't know for a fact she's doing it. Remember, I'm trying to fake Jen out by not going for scientists like I normally would, but Jen is certainly acting like a proper explorer, which means if I want to prevent her from getting 30 points, she is going for it, I've got to make sure I've got more artifacts than her by the end of the game. So that's something i got to bear in mind in the back of, in the back of my head. So anyway, so Jen's giving herself some money. She is done for the, for the worker placement. It is my turn again. I cannot get money. So what else can I do? 
Well, I could go out exploring too, and because I start with some Terran goods, I could start making the uh, colony try to love me. But I just got all those extra cards so I could start building. So we're going to build, baby, build. And it is going to be a residential dome because that's going to help everybody. Now, this residential dome, I already talked about how many cards it's going to take. One plus the number for players, so three total. It's going to suck up energy. It's going to reduce our life support. It's going to put a, a strain on our life support. It's going to take more gases, more water. But it will, and it won't generate any more stock, more supplies. It'll take a lot of stock to build this thing. But it means we will have living quarters for thousands of additional citizens. And remember, I want that. So, I um, put this over here to say I'm starting to build it and whenever you do this you get I give up one of my cards to be one of the three cards that will ultimately have to be spent. Um right. So I will go on ahead and give up Let's see. I don't want to make people unhappy, but I know we're going to run out of water because of this desert planet. And I don't, I don't want a smear campaign. I want migration to happen. I want this to be a big, successful colony. So I'm going to give this up. And by the way, these white circles, these are RF chips. In the real game, that you won't see them. They'll actually be embedded into the card. But in this prototype, they just stick out like a sore thumb. So anyway, I have started working on the residential dome. But if we can't actually build it until two more decree cards have been spent on it. They can be spent by me in the future or by any other player, because players can work together. And there might be other players who agree that, yes, it would be very good to get the residence. Now, because I'm the one who started it, when it gets finished, I'll get a tiny bit of a bonus, um, but not enough to necessarily scare other people away from helping, because it benefits all of us. Because if we don't have more room for our growing population, they'll revolt, and then it'll be bad news. So anyway, so I've started working on that. That was my second action. Now, all the worker placement is done. And by the way, there are tons and tons and tons of modules that can be built. Some of them are only available depending on which player characters, but there's a lot that are always available, and they get more and more expensive. A lot of them give you special worker placements actions that are much more powerful. Why get one credit like Jen when you can get two credit, and you can increase your standing by launching a political campaign if you've built the obelisk, which, as you might imagine, is tough to build, but it greatly improves the immigration. So, I mean, I could have tried to build this right off the bat, but remember, I've got the secret um, of wanting to get specific buildings built. So anyway, so there's a ton of stuff to build. Each one of these is its own cool, unique, um, wired up, ready to be lit up module. Okay, so uh, that was that. We're done with this. Now, the next thing we do, after all the worker placement is done, everybody in player order, starting with the current governor, has the opportunity to put a decree into motion. So the ones I still got, the radio station, the distribution strategy, uh, my discovery program, and food rations, I could put this to a vote. Not a vote amongst players, but amongst the colonists. All of those people um, who right now are very happy, and we could put to a vote, and next month they will decide whether this will pass or not. So, getting them to be unhappy by uh, sanctioning, by, uh, you know, rationing water, I guarantee if I tried to put this to a vote right now, it would fail, um, and that would not help my standing in the colony. Um, so, I need to get them on side. I need to make them love me, maybe by doing some politics, you know, which again, it was this particular action. So, I'm not going to try to do that, but I am going to try to get the people to love me more. I'm going to say, it's time for radio stations, everybody. Does the colony agree with the addition of a radio station? So, what you do is, you take that, remember this is an RF chip, you put it on the arc, and... As you can see, the app has recognized, hey, somebody's trying to do a decree for a radio station. Now we have to tell the ARC who it is, which means I use my own little RF. I'm the one who, who did this. And it'll read it. There we go. Confirmed. All righty. So the app will now tell us next round if this was successful. And if it is successful, that's going to bode well for me as a, a potential future president of this colony. All right, so I just keep this over here with my other stuff. Jen can do the same. I haven't even looked at her decrees yet. What has she got? Well, she's got her special starting one, the private expedition, which, uh, again, makes it easier for her to do expeditions because she's an explorer. She got... Census, which people won't like, makes them unhappy, but it does increase our tech and adds 100 citizens. Alrighty. And 
a uh, free health program. All right, makes people happy, increases our tech, or increases our security, doesn't help our tech, but we uh, lose one stock. But who doesn't, I mean, you know, Jen can offer universal health care, Medicare for all right now. Jen says, sure, we've got lots of stock. We've got 30 stock right now. No problem. Jen is going to try to get this thing passed to get people to love her. All righty. And now, there we go. Uh, I should say my prototype, the software, uh, the developers told me it runs a little slow. Sometimes it re responds immediately. Sometimes it's slow, but it's all prototype. It'll all get fixed by the time the game is up. So anyway, Jen has done this. She has to declare it's her. Ta -da. And so Jen has now tried to pass, we both tried to pass a decree from our hand of cards. All right. And now the last thing that happens in a round, if a building was completed, uh, which in this case, remember, I needed two more cards devoted to this, either by me or somebody else. If this building is completed, then we would actually grab the module, which one is it? It's one of these, and we would attach it. It would light up, and it would start um, becoming part of the simulation. People would literally move from here into here. They do it virtually on the app, but... Uh, it's incredible, all the stuff the app keeps track of. I'll talk about that in the final thoughts. Okay, so uh, since this isn't built, we're not going to do that. The first round is over. We are going to go on. Let's go on ahead back here. Next, let's go to the next uh, month two of 20 and see what's in store for us. Oh, did I hit the button? I don't know that I did. There we go. Yep. Yeah. Uh, are you going to go? There we go. All right. So month two, there's been an occurrence. People are dying because of breathing. All right. So H minus, uh, the happiness has dropped. Um, but we did get 100 citizens. All right. Um, oh, no. The radio station failed. What? Why would you? Why does... I, 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 I guess they're Spotify fans. I don't know. Anyway, so Jen's um, initiative passed, which um, says the colony loses one stock, but people get happier. People want the health care, but they turned down my radio station, which means Jen now has a better standing with the people than me. Drat. Okay. And meanwhile, 400 people have shown up. And it's 100 more. Or uh, Yeah. Uh, and let's see. We have consumed stuff. We, we see our taxes gets us more stock, and no module construction is going on. But we are just losing stock over time by running the arc, and we haven't had to import anything. So that is the uh, change. And now we would do upkeep because we're into month two. What this means is, um, because this isn't finished, I now have to pay upkeep to keep this dream alive. It's unfortunately one credit. So I better finish this next round, or else I'll have to burn through more money. All right, so I paid one credit, and if I had hired the uh, pilot to give me extra actions, I would have to pay him a luxury good, otherwise he would quit. Or the AI, or what have you, or whatever special assistance might be in the game. Now, um, so we don't have any of them, but I did have to pay one upkeep. Urgh, but I'll get this dome finished next round, and it'll be good for me. It's good for everybody, but especially good for me. And uh, we are done with that. So uh, no upkeep, fine. Let's just close that. And here we are in month two. All right. Actually, things have, I mean, in spite of the fact some people have died, things are doing better. Although, as you can see, we are trending more regular colonists. We are over our limit, and this is going to start being a problem pretty soon. Also, we have burned through five of our 30 stock. So we are burning through our supplies quickly with this increase in population. And a whole bunch of security people have shown up. Which Jen might think, oh, that's bad news for me because I want scientists, but I don't want scientists. I'd be totally fine with more security to keep the people in line. Um, and that's probably why our security is steady because these security people have shown up. All right. So anyway, that is the situation we are on to round two. And we start doing the worker placement again. I am still the first player. I will hold on to governor unless somebody co comes up with a decree that makes governorship change. Although, as I understand it, there will be other ways, uh, worker placement ways to change first player as well. Because again, this is a prototype. Uh, you know, they're still working on some elements of the design. So I want to get this dome done. So let's go on ahead and spend another card. I have to do them one at a time. So the two actions I'm going to take are going to be to finish this thing. So I got to give up another decree. Um, well, to heck with you people. You didn't want my... Ra oh, by the way. So my radio, if this had gone through, 
Well, all managers would have been able to um, dump an old decree card and draw a new one. And I would have liked to do that because I'm not crazy about mine. But they said no to radio stations. So that's gone. But however, gens did happen, um, which means we lost one stock. But that's why, in spite of the fact that 100 people died, um, you know, pr probably after they died, they figured, oh, it's a good thing they've turned on free healthcare. That's why uh, the people love Jen at this point. Okay. So uh, those are done. And I am going to put. Oh, what is it? Uh, bah, 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 bah. Um, right, right, right. Oh, yeah, my uh, water distribution. So that was my first action. And now Jen is going to take two actions. Jen is going to get some more credits. Oh, wait, no, she already got some credits. Jen is going to continue to explore. She'll spend all three credits. And boom, she has now found this artifact. So that means she gets to look at it. She gets to know that she has found an abandoned orbital lander. And when she finishes researching it, it'll be worth two points. And she'll get four Terran goods from the bank. And she can you can check the next artifact from the artifact deck and exchange it with an... Oh, wow. So it gives you a lot more control. All right. So anyway, this now comes down here. It is. It has been found, but now Jen has to spend time researching it. She has to spend one political favor, and she has to spend three Terran goods. Okay. For her to be able to get that thing, and then she'll actually have an artifact. It'll be face up. It'll give her that special power. In the meantime, she can start exploring for something else, etc., etc. So that was Jen's um, first action. She's done that. Now, we clear these out. Jen gets to do another action. And now, because this is a semi-cooperative game, this is where I say, uh, hey, honey, how do you feel about helping me finish this thing? Um, because, you know, I'm burning through cards. I'm burning through money. You got, I mean, we're, we're all here trying to make these people uh, better. And she said, okay, well, what's in it for me? And I say, well, you don't have those Terran goods. I have the discovery program. I could go on ahead and put this to a vote later on um, if you, uh, you know, if you want to, because, hey, it'll benefit her because, uh, Jen would get to finish her research for free. She would not have to pay the Terran goods. She wouldn't have to spend time getting those Terran goods because she's burned through them all, et cetera, et cetera. So that could be a real boon for her. And I say, I'll put this to a vote. Although I can't do it for a while because I need three political. I, I say, if you want to provide the political impetus, I'll put this to a vote that would let you skip both of these. And she said, okay, yeah, that sounds good. I'll go on ahead. And all right. So for her second one, she is going to help me out. And she will, she was not planning on doing the census anyway. So boom, the third one is done. Hooray! So I can do something else now. Um, and what do I want to do? Well, people don't like me, apparently. I don't know why. I mean, look at me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a handsome fellow. With a little, my cybernetic implants and all that. I think I need to get people on side with me. So I could come over here to get myself some political capital. And remember, I need three political capital to do this, like I promised for Jen. But in the short term, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to come over here to say, people, like me more! And so I just did a campaign. I was so disheartened by my failure to get a radio station running um, that I figured, okay, now people like me more, which means in the future, I'll have a better shot at getting my decrees passed. And Jen says, hey, what gives? And I said, well, you know, you don't want this to fail, do you? I, I need to make sure people are on my side. And so that was my second action. We have finished the second round. The worker placement is done again. And now, once again, if we want to, before the round is over, I could start trying to ration water. I could do this. But I don't... I, I could spend a crap. I'm not going to do that. And I'm not, I can't do that. Is Jen going to do one? She is not going to do one either. So we're going to skip on doing decrees. But we have finished the residential dome. Hooray! Okay. So that means we take this. We add it over here. And a lot of things would add another worker placement slot. But this just adds... Um, another thing we have access to, I've got to grab a dome. Here's one. And I've got to grab one of these cool little electric circuit connectors. And I go on ahead and slot it in. And you'll notice it's lit up and it's starting to get built. When it's flashing green, that means it's being built. Once it becomes a solid green, it is finished building. But of course, they can flash other things, like red, to indicate that the people are unhappy and are going to revolt. So, our colony has started to build. And as you can see, the app's asking, who was responsible for this? It was Boris. All right, I've got to swipe my ID card. And again, remember, uh, the app is a little bit slow. The developers know this. Uh, you won't have to wait around so long. There we go. Boris built it. 
All right, and that's going to be worth points to me, and the people of this colony know I'm the one who built that. So between that and my political campaign, I think now, if I tried to get a radio station up and running, the people would be a little bit more amenable to my charms. Okay, so we have finished that. And um, as you can see in the app, it shows down there at the bottom left that the residential is beginning to be built. Um, it'll stay down there until it's fully built. All righty, let's move on to the third month. All right, and we'll see what happens. Okay. Oh, it's overcrowded. Well, because we took too long. It's a good thing we are starting to build this. There's more residents and beds, etc., etc. All right, we are building it. It's coming. Yeah. All right, and so in the meantime, more migration. People are excited about coming here. Um, our taxes are going up, which means you generate more stock, but the module construction is consuming that stock right back down. All righty. And uh, we have... Uh, oh, wait. And... Uh, so that was it. No other events happened this time. There were no meteor storms or um, you know plagues or uh, you know uh, you know national holidays or all the different types of things that can happen. There's no upkeep this time, so we can go on ahead and skip that. And we are now on to round three. And as you can see, we got trouble. Um, uh, we have occupancy issues up there in the uh, top right. And you can see there's all kinds of other things like uh, riots breaking out. Uh, yeah, the particular issues we have to worry about that are tracked up in the top right are, are they starting to riot? Are we having to rely too much on Earth? Because the more we rely on Earth for our sustainability, the uh, less political power we have. So we're still building. Um, oh, and again... Uh, you can see the residential is now starts to have some progress being built. So, um, and our population maximum is now 4,000. We now have room for 4,000 colonists, which is good. Um, people were happy. Now they're just content. Security is okay. We're great on tech. If our tech ever drops, things start breaking down. People start suffocating. Uh, crops start going bad. So we have to keep our tech up. We have to keep our security up so we don't have revolts. We have to keep our happiness up so people don't want to revolt. Um, and it is now time for round three, and we can start doing more stuff. Jen, of course, wants is, is not working on this because I promised I will do this. So I might say, well, I'll make good. Hey, I'm going to start working on getting those political capital I promised. Boop! Because I need three of them. And then Jen might say, oh, okay, well, um... What is she going to do? What other problems do we have? We're doing fine right now. Our only problem was occupancy. Right now, we uh, we do we have more than enough liquid. We have more than enough gas. Our life support is getting a little bit lower, but we're still doing okay. So if Jen wanted to, she could go out exploring some more. Although to do it, she would need some Terran goods. Because remember, Jen wants to have another exploration going before she finishes this, because that was one of the effects of this, is that she can change what she's currently exploring for. So Jen did that, and then she says, oh, okay, and then we reset. She said, okay, I will go out. And she is going to try and find uh, something else. Uh, she doesn't know what it is, but we'll just go ahead and take a look. It's fluorescent dust, which gives her three decree cards and um, three credits. And any other player uh, who is also working on an expedition gets three points. So Jen would have to help somebody else out. But it would, she'd only be able to help me if I had an expedition of my own going on, which currently I do not. So anyway, so Jen has started working on that. And um, I, hey, I'm running out on cards. I'm just going to get a couple more decrees. So it was kind of a laid back. A lot of times these turns can go super fast because a lot of it is building up resources to do a big turn. It might take you two or three months. Um, right. So anyway, what did I just get? I got... Free public transport. Surely the people will like that. Although it hurts our tech and our secure, our tech and our secure, our security and our tech. But it makes people so happy to have subways. And um, colony gets one stock per hundred scientists if we do geological surveys. That would cost me a credit. That is free. All righty. So I've got some stuff. All right. And um, yeah, the game continues. And over time, we will build more and more things. And uh, it's interesting. It is very important to bear in mind where we build them from because there is efficiency of transport. If there is a module that generates something that another module needs, you should put them close to each other. Because if you put them on the far opposite sides of the uh, colony, then uh, the efficiency will drop and you won't get as much water, for instance, transport or energy or food or whatever transported. You can build in such a way that if certain types of modules are next to each other, it creates slums that uh, people are living in. And then suddenly you need to worry more about you know hiring security forces and whatnot. So over the course of the game, 
I'm just cheating right now and building a whole bunch of stuff. And you can see they're all starting to light up. And the app, meanwhile, saying, who built that? Who built that? Who built that? Of course, uh, because we have to keep track of that. Who was responsible for all these various things? And the game continues like this over 20 months, if you're playing the standard game. I'm going to say Jen built the next one. Because uh, I just built a whole bunch of stuff. And, uh, you know, this is going to generate things, but it's also going to put a lot of stress on the colony as well. But, folks, I think I'm going to stop right there, because that should give you a pretty good idea of what Beyond Humanity Colonies is all about. And if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that I up in the top right corner of the screen in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.